Good evening and welcome to League of Women Voters Presents. Our topic tonight is progress in mental health services for children and youth. And our panelists are from my far left, Kelly Wallace, she's Director of Boone County Community Services. Uh, David Thomas is a member of the Children's Grove Put in, and, put, and Putting Kids First Education Committee. And Sharon Thomas Parks is chair of the Education Committee of Children's Grove and Putting Kids First. Thank you all for being here tonight and uh, look forward to uh, learning more about the children's services, mental health services in particular uh, in Columbia and Boone County. Thank you very much, Jim, for uh, the opportunity and for moderating our discussion. Well, you're welcome. Um, Kelly. Yes. There's a uh, tax, uh, sales tax, uh, dedicated to children's services. It's uh, passed in 2012 in November. And it's been your um, task to kind of oversee uh, the distribution of that tax and, and working with the, the board uh, appointed by the county. Earlier this year, uh, I think you all handed out about $5 million in, in awards for services. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, what the nature of those services and, and uh, what it's doing for Boone County kids? Absolutely. We did invest about $5.1 million into our community to address children's and families' needs, mostly around mental health and substance abuse issues. And our largest contract was actually given to, on behalf of Boone County Schools Mental Health Coalition. That coalition was formed when they heard about the passage of the tax. I'm told it's an unprecedented occurrence that all the superintendents from all the Boone County Schools came together for a common purpose. And it was a really great purpose because they worked with the University of Missouri to submit a proposal that would meet the needs of all Boone County children that are in the, in the Boone County school districts. And so what that proposal is going to enable the schools to do with the help of the University of Missouri is to identify children who are at risk of having mental health issues or behavioral issues or substance abuse issues. They'll do that with a very simple screening process, something that the children may not even be aware of, something that teachers can identify through their experience of, of things that might be little red flags for children. And then the teachers are given an opportunity to choose from a menu of of intervention services that might help that child or if they're having a classroom problem that might help with a classroom issue. And then um, there's also wraparound services within the school. So if a child does have a little bit higher of a need than their peers, then they can go on for further help. Um, but we also funded multiple other programs, 23 programs in total. 15 of them being a purchase a service type of contract where we're, where we're buying a specific service at a specific unit rate and price. So things like children's emergency shelter um, and uh, counseling services, psychiatric services. We also funded some pilot programs, eight pilot programs, and those are not necessarily defined services. They're innovative programs to address children's and families' mental health needs. A couple examples of those would be um, Central Missouri Community Actions pilot program. It's called the Bridge Program, and they further the Head Start interventions into kindergarten and first grade we've seen that the drop off um, from the success that happens with Head Start doesn't continue on. And so this pro pilot program is something to see if we, if we continue wrapping services around the family, if that will continue to improve those children's outcomes. Mm -hmm. David and Sharon, <clears throat> mental health has been a traditionally underserved um, predicament, uh, not mental health, but uh, mental health uh, issues, uh, and, and, the, and people who suffer mental health issues have been particularly underserved in this state and, and probably over the country. Does this effort, I, I know that the, the uh, Children's Grove 
um, was developed about the same time this effort with the children's services funding came up. Why, why now and, and how does it all work together? I might uh, mention, Jim, as far as the Children's Grove really uh, came out of the unfortunate tragedy in Massachusetts in the elementary school at Sandy Hook. And um, the, I believe it was 22 lives that were taken. And uh, Ann Deaton was really the primary person. Susan, uh, Suzanne McDavid also was uh, very instrumental. And those two uh, really started Children's Grove. And there were I can't tell you exactly how many, but 10 or 12 different entities, a lot of them individuals, that uh, put in uh, about 22 to $23,000 initially. To, uh, and as a result of that, we were able to plant 41 trees in Stevens Park. And that was dedicated a year ago on May 5th. And um, it's kind of building from that. And um, so that's to create awareness. It's to create awareness of the men mental health issues. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it's still a, a misunderstood. Uh, in many cases, people are still hesitant to admit that they, their child has a problem. Sure. And uh, so this is one of the things is to help broaden that understanding, uh, help on the awareness of what can be there. And uh, I think that's what's so critical right now. Um, I spent 15 years in uh, Metropolitan St. Louis running a program uh, for individuals that couldn't succeed in the traditional school setting. And I got referred to it as a three-legged stool, academic, therapeutic, and parental involvement. But the therapeutic was a major portion of that. And uh, in a public school, a counselor today is usually gonna have a caseload of somewhere between 350 up to 500. The program that I, and the model that I had in St. Louis, and that served both St. Louis County, it served St. Charles County, we got down into Franklin County, we got over into Illinois. Um, I had 14 licensed therapists with a caseload of 12 to 14. And you could then get down and meet the needs of that individual child. I think it's, it's very important that we help people understand. And um, Sharon uh, is doing an excellent job on a for mental health first aid training. And because uh, people a lot of times don't know how to recognize right. a problem, just as Kelly was pointing out, out of Head Start, but then it kind of dropped off. Right. And uh, so this is a means to continue that. Sharon, I know you've worked in uh, mental health for many years. Um, what is your role in, in the putting kids first in the, in the first aid? Well, I am the chair of the Children's Grove, and what the relationship is between the Children's Grove and putting kids first is that when Ann Deaton and Suzanne McDavid really got this community um, impassioned with the idea of the Children's Grove, we quickly aligned or, or joined the group Putting Kids First that was already formed. So the Putting Kids First group, that coalition, was the group of folks that got the, um, the Children's Mental Health Tax passed. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. So they were the driving force behind that. Mm -hmm. And um, the passion that came with the Children's Grove, we realized very quickly that we were, that both of those groups were working in the same direction. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the Children's Grove has 
three areas that it really uh, focuses on. One is the grove itself, that physical symbol in our community says, that says, we support our youth and we want to nurture our children and make sure that they feel safe in this community. And the second is this uh, idea of acts of kindness. So, um, for instance, uh, the Parks and Recs will have a family fun fest in, in May, on May 20th, and the Children's Grove uh, will have a, a booth there, and the theme is, you know, acts of kindness. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the third piece to the Children's Grove is mental health awareness and helping the community feel more comfortable having a discussion about mental health and mental illness. And so we have uh, either, either sponsored or supported, uh, and we're, we're putting out effort for this community to be trained in youth mental health first aid. And mental health first aid is a national, well, it's an international program, actually. Uh, began in Australia in 2001 brought it to the United States in 2008, and um, we have educated several people in this community. And what mental health first aid is, really, it's, it's, it's a, the same concept as physical first aid. Mm -hmm. So a person in the general public who is not a trained mental health professional or not a trained medical professional can actually save a person's life if they've been trained in CPR or they know how to administer the Heimlich maneuver. So if somebody can't breathe, then if I'm trained, uh, if I'm trained in CPR, then I can help keep that person alive until professional help arrives. Right. So mental health first aid is the same concept, that people in the general public can offer help to somebody who's developing a mental disorder or who may be experiencing uh, a mental health crisis or even in just emotional distress. They learn how to recognize the signs and symptoms. They learn how to reach out and offer some help until either professional help or resources are available, treatment, or in case, in, until the uh, crisis resolves. That can be, a, I would imagine, a pretty uncomfortable task to approach someone that you uh, may know mm -hmm. well, may not know so well, and say, do you need help? <laughs> well, that's what the program helps you do. So, mm -hmm. so in a youth mental health first aid course, it's, a, it's an eight-hour course. It's a public education and information course, like physical first aid. Mm -hmm. And so the person uh, gets a manual, and we help them recognize those signs and symptoms and we walk them through, how do you approach this person? What do you say? What do you do? How to connect them with care in the community? And so by the time the person finishes this eight hour course, they're walking out feeling very comfortable mm -hmm. and very confident. We have an action plan that they can use, so we give them a five step action plan that they can use. So this is comparable to the Red Cross Life Saving Course. Well, it's based yeah, on the same, same concept. Track, right. Mm -hmm. um, that course of course is uh, uh, required for certain people, medical yes. professionals, and uh, is, is uh, promoted through service groups, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, that kind of thing. Is, is this something that, is that a model that you can use? How, do you, how are you going <laughs> to educate uh, the mass of people? You know, we, we have many, many people who are very interested in this. Mm -hmm. It is an evidence-based program. So it is on the National uh, Registry of Evidence-Based Programs and, practice, and Practices. So <clears throat> one of the projects, I believe, that uh, the Children's Fund is supporting is tra training the all school staff so the program that I mentioned that uh, we funded for the Boone County Schools Mental Health Coalition 
they've actually committed through that uh, contract to train all school staff. So all teachers, <coughs> counselors in the schools. In um, every Boone County school. In every single Boone County school. That's pretty clever. Um, and they will also um, make attempts to bring in community members if we were, we have a possibility that we might receive extra grant funds from, um, from another source. And they would use that to open up the training that they're providing to school staff, to the general community. What our, what our vision is, is that we would have um, large employers uh, offer this to their employees. So Boone County, the city of Columbia, the law enforcement mm -hmm. offices, and Walmart employees, those people that would have the opportunity to recognize the, the kinds of things that Sharon was talking about. Jim, I think one of the things that it's a little bit of uh, backing up, but I think it reinforces everything that uh, Kelly and uh, Sharon have been talking about, is back in uh, the summer of 12, when we were spending a lot of time door to door informing people one of my assignments was to visit individually with each of the superintendents of schools outside of Columbia. And one of the biggest hesitations of each of those superintendents is that this would not come to them, is that it would only be used in Columbia. And putting kids first assured them that that would not be the case. And so that is what Children's Fund Board, and I want to say also is that the model that Boone County has come up with is that the county commissioners are still involved in oversight of this. And that model is not followed in all counties. I think we're very fortunate that, uh, that the county and the county commissioners are committed in that. Mm -hmm. But then the coalition of the superintendents is a, a coalition that hadn't existed before. Now, I'm not saying they hadn't been together informally. No. But at Does least that coalition still exist? I mean, they, they, they uh, are active? Well, it's very active now it's, on mental health. It's mm -hmm. very active. The coalition still exists. They now meet on other issues. And um, they've actually hired a director to keep the coalition together and to oversee the project that was that was contracted through the Children's Services Fund. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I would mention is that um, our intent uh, from Children's Grove is anyone who has experience dealing with young people, if it be through Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, if it be 4-H, if it be church youth groups, uh, synagogue youth groups, whatever the case might be, is that they also will be trained. Anyone who interacts with youth can be exposed. And simultaneously, it was a thing that you mentioned in the very beginning, Jim, is that what we've got to do is help not only create, but convince the children. And when I say children, I'm talking everything from two, three, all the way up to 18, that there, is, there are safe places for them. There are people that's available to help them. Mm -hmm. Now that sounds simple, but it'd be amazing the number of young people that don't think that and don't realize that. What is the, the biggest need to, to make that happen? I mean, you get, you're, uh, you get, what, six million dollars a year in tax revenue, approximately? Approximately. Uh, and I, I am assuming that the need uh, far outstrips that. It certainly does. How, are, how do you tri uh, tri triage this? How do you well, what we did, um, the, what the Children's Services Board did, which David, David alluded to earlier, is that we 
contracted with the Institute of Public Policy, the Truman School with the University of Missouri, and we conducted community input sessions. We held five community input sessions that was open to the public. We also um, spoke to 10 key stakeholders in our community, and then we synthesized existing needs assessments that had been done on our community. And with that information, we developed priorities. And what was identified by our community input report is that there were three main issues in our community that needed to be addressed. The first one being access to services. And that ranges from anything from transportation needs to being uninsured. The second one was education. And when we're talking about education, we're talking about educating those people who have the firsthand interactions with our children. So our early child care providers, our school staff, and parents. Um, and then the community as well, informing them of, and helping destigmatize uh, behavioral health issues. And then the third issue that was identified by the report was systems and structures. And what that really envelops is uh, providers working in silos. So what we heard from the, from the providers themselves is they knew what they were doing and they might know what a few other organizations were doing, but to really get the full picture of the availability of resources in our community, it was difficult to determine what was the best course of action for a particular child or family. And so what we really hope to do, and we have a request for proposals out currently, it's open now and due May 18th, is we hope to develop a program, an access to services program, that will help put all the pieces together. So now we have 23 programs that are either newly starting or expanding their services. And how do we get the children and families connected with those services? How do they know where to go? Uh, and so what we hope to do is de develop a program that will help put those pieces together. So a family will be well informed about who to call, where to go, to get their foot in the door. And what might that look like? It could look like several different things. There are different ideas about what it might look like. An option would be that there would be a, 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 a door, a, a place to a go, physical. a physical space yeah. to go. And no matter what your problem is, you, you go in, you get an evidence-based assessment, and you get a non-conflicted referral. So the person who is assessing your needs will not be the same entity that says, oh, and we also provide those services. It will be something where the family has a choice, where there's information given to the child and the family about what their options are, and then they can make an informed choice about how to proceed with receiving services. We also know that just with the same as with physical illnesses, the earlier that we intervene and, and uh, a child or young person gets treatment uh, for a mental disorder, then the better the outcomes over time. So when we discuss reducing the stigma of mental illness, you know, as more adults become aware of what the signs and symptoms are, we reduce the stigma People feel more comfortable reaching out and saying, do you need some help? And being able to connect that person with care, then the better outcomes that young person will have. And I think that also conveys a message that I am a safe adult, I care about you, and I want you to get the help that you need. You deserve that help, right? We want children to feel as comfortable saying, I'm, I'm sad all the time, or I don't think I'm thinking straight. We want that person to feel as comfortable saying that as a child would feel comfortable coming to us and saying, you know, I think I have a sore throat, or I have a tummy ache. We want that level of destigmatization to occur. And, and that happens beginning at a very early age, I guess. You, you really can't step into when they're 15 years old and, and say, okay, I want you to be comfortable asking for help. 
it's much better if we start the younger. <laughs> start young. Yeah, sure. And it, it's we an can, education process, yeah. I guess. We can and, still and, convey that message to yeah. older youth. I understand that youth yeah. maybe well. less likely mm -hmm. to accept yeah. it on its face. <laughs> and Jim, another thing I'd, I'd like to mention that Children's Grove is doing uh, through Sharon's organization uh, is a publicity committee and an education committee. And we are now working with one of the uh, uh, major radio networks and also uh, the University of Missouri's KOMU TV station on means of having a regular opportunity to communicate mental health awareness issues. And both have been very receptive to the possibilities. And we're trying to make certain that in these programs that we involve young people in the programs. And so uh, we're trying to make sure that we just don't go to, I don't know what age to say, but 45 and over, mm -hmm. or 55 <laughs> and over, <laughs> but that we're able to reach uh, a parent that may be in the 18, 22, 26 and up range, but also to be able to reach an individual that may be listening to a radio station. Now, I'm out of that wavelength, but we've got people that are working on it sure. that are. And uh, that's, so when we say education and awareness, that's what Children's Grove is continuing to move forward on. And uh, I would also like to comment, and it's, it's a little bit going back, but as far as the county commission, their support, the dedication of the Children's Fund Board. I don't know if they're still meeting weekly, but they did for a number of months of putting together this program. And we have avoided situations that other counties, and there's not that many other counties that have been involved. Most of those are in metropolitan areas. And uh, that alliance, that cooperation is key. Also, I want to acknowledge the League of Women Voters and this program and support that they have given all along in helping get the message out. And it's very important that uh, people of Boone County realize what they were told would happen is happening. And unfortunately, we're out of time. That's a great note to end on, though. And, and I think that it's a testament to people like the three of you uh, who have dedicated substantial time and energy to making this work, and uh, I appreciate it, and thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. And thank you for being with us. Uh, hope you will get involved in the conversation about mental health, and uh, be sure and, and uh, do what you can. Thank you, and good night. <laughs>